We'd like to say that you are seeing the future. Uh, it's really impressive the notion of, of relocating buildings and reusing them. Some of the pods that you see here are destined to go to the hotel in the Red Sea Development Company. Good day everyone and welcome to a new episode of Industry Spectrum. As the region carefully emerges out of lockdown, so does Industry Spectrum venture out of its home edition. So today in a first for us, I'm being hosted by my guest. His name is Riyad Psaibis, and he is the president and the CEO of Amana Investments. Riyad, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Naji, and good afternoon. Riyad, can you please start by explaining to our audience uh, who Amana Investments are? Absolutely. Uh, so Amana Investments is the holding company of Amana Contracting Group. And within Amana Contracting Group, we have a number of brands, uh, uh, one of which is Amana uh, Buildings, three buildings. Yes. And the second is Dubox and Dupod. And Dubox and Dupod fall under the Amana Modular Vertical uh, within the group. Okay. Uh, Amana Contracting Group is across the Gulf, is a general construction company across the uh, GCC. Okay. And um, can you maybe describe a bit about what happens in this, uh, in this really nice factory we're in today? Absolutely. We'd, we'd like to say that you are seeing the future, or at least the beginning of the future. And it's the future of manufacturing construction. So Dupod is a new brand that we are uh, we've soft launched in 2020 and will be officially launching in early 2021. And it's really around manufacturing uh, uh, time critical components for the construction sector, starting with bathrooms and kitchens. We're able to do that because of the ability to integrate between the use of BIM and 3D modeling, along with the CNC machines that would take in the BIM material cut uh, cold uh, formed uh, steel components uh, uh, into the cages. So really, in a, to make a long story short, if you walk into a hotel, everything you see in that bathroom in the hotel would be done within a pod uh, that you see in the factory here, as opposed to being done bespoke on site. What you've just described is a perfect example of the convergence of construction and manufacturing. And in construction, um, we, we generate around a third of the world's uh, solid waste. So what do you think the adoption of manufacturing techniques in construction, such as industrialized design and modular design, would bring to reduction, to waste reduction in general? One of the main, main uh, advantages of uh, modular construction is the ability by design to reduce wastage uh, because the design itself, for example, first, any clashes in the different disciplines are seen in the, in the BIM model, so that's re that reduces wastage. Second, because you standardize the processes and you turn to a manufacturing environment versus a bespoke construction environment, you reduce the wastage in the construction itself. The end result is you almost take out a third of the wastage that would have been the case had you constructed on site in the traditional manner uh, by shifting it to a manufacturing environment and really standardizing the processes. 30% is really, really impressive. Um, can you speak to other benefits of modular construction? Because it's in a manufacturing environment, you have the uh, credibility of the, of the timeline or the, the uh, alignment with the timeline. So the timeline is, uh, it does not slip because you're in a manufacturing process. Uh, third, uh, by having it in a manufacturing environment, it's safer. So everything, as you can see here, is done at ground level. So unlike traditional construction where you can have people working at, at heights and therefore uh, prone to, to, to accidents, it's much safer in an, in an environment uh, uh, within a factory. Now, the concept itself of being modular also has additional benefits. So, for example, one of the benefits is when you add all of this together is the delivery mechanism becomes faster. So we're able to save anywhere between 20 to 30 percent of, of our timeline to construct a building by doing it uh, modular. So if you're constructing in a remote location where you have to uh, mobilize and, and house uh, the people working on the project and, and, and dispatch material from the cities to the remote locations, by doing modular, you're building it within the city and shipping the product almost finished. And therefore, the cost becomes much more competitive than the technical or traditional construction. I understand. Uh, it's really impressive the notion of, of relocating buildings and reusing them. And I think it speaks a lot to um, uh, you know, the circular economies and the circular construction that, that is, uh, is upon us in the near future. In the factory, there are different uh, processes that go on. So we put the cage, then we close the cage, and then we do the finishing from the inside and the NEP works. For it. 
and you're going to see here in, in different stations, different works are done uh, uh, for it. This is yes. the production line? This is the production, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. And what we are considering also now is we, we are doing R&D on putting IoT devices on the process itself, mm -hmm. so that we can, uh, we can automatically gather the data on the process, as well as the people working on the pod, so that we know the productivity of okay. each pod and how many hours went into each, each pod's productivity. And then we also have a proposal, some of our clients like that, where we are enabling some of these pods with IoT devices within the pod that measure the water consumption and power consumption and wastewater consumption so right. that they're able to see in a, on, a, on a pod by pod basis or bathroom by bathroom basis the, the use of these uh, uh, you know, vital resources. You also experienced in traditional project execution. So what kind of reskilling um, or even mindset change do you offer people who come to work at Amana Investments from a traditional construction practice? So there's a number of things that are different between a, a process that's in a construction, the bespoke construction, and the manufacturing, which is done in a modular environment like here. So for one, for example, a, the designers and the structural engineers and the AutoCAD operators have to operate in a, in a 3D environment, by definition. Yes. Modular cannot operate in a 2D environment because you have to detect those clashes very early on. Um, so that's one. So now in, in this factory, we're beginning to introduce IoT, uh, Internet of Things devices, so that we can manage the process of the pods as they shift from one station to the next, so that we can measure the productivity and the time they take and so on and therefore the resources they take uh, to, to be manufactured through the, the processes. So a number of things, th these things, as we retool our people, uh, uh, we are seeing that they're needed because of the manufacturing environment. Okay. It's, you know, I look forward to the day when, when the actual functionality of a building will, act, will, will be increased by, by a software update. I mean, we've seen it with phones, we've seen it with cars, mm -hmm. and I think eventually we'll even see it with, uh, with buildings. Um, can you speak about a project that was better suited for modular construction because of a desired outcome that your end user wanted? Some of the pods that you see here are destined to go to the hotel in the Red Sea Development Company. And, uh, and this was a project that was tendered out to uh, public tender uh, and different contractors with different technologies uh, applied. And the modular technology was by far the most competitive and the most suitable because the environment that the Red Sea wants to develop in is a, is a very pristine environment. It's one of the most pristine environments in the world, right at the virgin shores of the Red Sea with all the wildlife that it has to offer. And they want to develop it uh, without, um, with a minimal impact on the environment. So you can imagine a traditional construction site right at the shores of that wildlife, wildlife will just create havoc to the environment. So modular was perfect. So what we did is set up a, a factory in Saudi Arabia, a few hundred kilometers away from site, where we assembled completely the do-box modules there, and we shipped them to be installed at site. And those modules for the hotels and the accommodations, as uh, you enter into their bathrooms, let's say in two years from now, it will be these pods that you're seeing here. So the pods here are being manufactured, shipped to the factory in Saudi. They're installed into the Dubox uh, modular uh, uh, footprint, and then that, that module itself is shipped to uh, the, the, the eventual uh, site, and it's installed there at site with minimal impact. So instead of having thousands of employees at site, we are having hundreds, maybe a few, a few over 100 employees at site to do that kind of work. So you're building more, building safer, and with much less environmental impact. Absolutely. And the second uh, project I can think of is a project we completed for ADNOC back in 2016. And the requirement for ADNOC was to be a relocatable building in case they need to relocate it. But yet, it's a permanent accommodation for their staff in Rois. And this was really not really a building. This was a compound of eight buildings uh, or 2,400 rooms roughly. And it was all done modular and shipped and, and, and installed at site. The United Nations estimate that in 2050 we will be 10 billion people on the planet and this will bring a lot of strain to the construction industry. How do you see the industry evolving to rise up to that challenge? I see uh, modular construction and off-site construction uh, accelerating. Uh, I see digitization accelerating. Uh, with, the, uh, the, with the coming of 5G networks, I see a lot of IoT, Internet of yes. Things devices being installed, whether in the process of construction or manufacturing for that matter, or in the actual building itself, the end result itself. I see down the road, uh, possibly as IoT increases in the construction side, the application of artificial intelligence, big data, 
and then analytics and artificial intelligence to really help us become more uh, uh, more reliable as a sector, whether reliable on the timing of the project, uh, the cost of the project, or, or eventually the quality of the project as well. You know, I'm very grateful for your insight and thank you for hosting us. Thank you for the opportunity, Naji, and welcome to DuPont. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Industry Spectrum. Till I see you again, please stay safe.